turn your Bibles, Matthew, book of Matthew, chapter 22. We'll start off, I told you that I was going to be in loving your neighbor this morning, loving your neighbor. Um, simple enough, amen, it's simple enough for us to say that we want to love our neighbor, but the thing about it is it's one of the most difficult things that we'll ever do, is really loving people, you know. Most people will say that people get on their everlasting nerve. Amen? Most people will say that it's hard to love folks sometimes. And and I want to tell you right now, in, in, in our own self, in our own doings, and in our own ways, it is hard to love other folks. Because I want to tell you right now, I, I'll tell you the simple answer to the equation is because we're too worried about loving ourselves. It's hard to love anybody else because we love ourselves so much. I know as a lost person, as a drug addict, I, I know that I always found fault in everybody else because I had so much fault in myself. When we have so much fault in self and we look at ourselves and we try to please ourselves and when we examine ourselves, we'll see all the, all the, <laughs> the shortcomings. We'll see how we all fail in a lot of areas, especially as a lost person. Um, how we fell in a loss uh, in, in a lot of areas. So therefore, when we find so much fault in self, then we'll try to find fault in, uh, in, in everybody else. Therefore, we can excuse where we come short at, where we uh, don't meet up to the standard in, in our own eyes. So we'll find fault in everybody else. Uh, when we don't um, know our identity, which is in Christ, when we don't have that identity, which is in Christ because we don't have in a relationship with Christ, then we'll always find fault in self. But Jesus talked to talked to um, in 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 these chapters and in these verses, he was strong to point out the importance of loving other folks. He was he was strong to point out that this was where the source of loving God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. This is how we are able to do that is by loving one another. What you do to the least of them is what you do to Him. So a lot of areas in our life is how we really love God is by loving one another. In verse 37 of chapter 22 of Matthew, it says, Jesus said unto them, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto that. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, I love you, Lord. I just thank you. Lord, I pray for any distraction that's in this room, Lord, that's in our mind, Lord. I pray that it be gone in the name of Jesus, Lord. That, Lord, that anything that's of me, of my flesh, Lord, I just pray that you put it to the side, Lord. I just pray that your word go through me today, Lord, and I just pray, Lord, as, as I minister, Lord, I minister by the Spirit of God and not in my flesh, Lord, but most of all, Lord, you would have your will in this room today, Lord, where we stand in need of, Lord, I pray that you would give it, but it's always by you, God, not of us, for it's in your name we pray, amen. <clears throat> you see, Jesus didn't say that according to your skin color, we should love them. Jesus didn't say whether you're Democrat or whether you're Republican, you should love them. Jesus didn't say according to the way that they dress, we should love them. Jesus didn't say if they're like us that we should love them. Jesus said that we should love our neighbor as ourselves. I asked my youth up there earlier today, I was like, how many of us in here can really say that we love our neighbor as we do ourselves. And it's not a youth question because I know without a shadow of a doubt that most youth, let's just be real, they're, they're a lot like us adults, but maybe even more so. Their life is, is concentrated on what, benefit, what benefits them, how this can, can, can get their status up or whatever you want to do. And, and, and adults in this room right now, we're guilty of it ourselves. Amen. We have a self-serving attitude. We have a self-motivated lifestyle, if you will. So Jesus didn't say according to a standard, according to a way, according to how that person is. or He didn't even say how that person treats you, you should treat them. 
The Bible says, do unto others as you would have them to do unto you, to love people when they despitefully use you. So it's a strong agape type love. Agape love is a love that no matter what the condition is, no matter what somebody does to you, or no matter what the situation is, that you're going to love them unconditionally. It's the same way that a parent loves their children. There's nothing a child can do to make them love, for you to make you love them anymore, and there's nothing they can do to make you love them any less. There's times in your life where you're proud of them, there's times maybe not so that they disappoint you, but it don't change your love for them, and that's what Jesus is talking about, a love that loves people no matter where they're at, what they've done, how they act. It's an agape-type love. He said to love them no matter what. Everyone in this room, everybody, including me, struggles with this in your life. Everybody. Showing that agape type love to people. Showing that love that is an unconditional love to people. It's, a, it's something that we all struggle with. So how do we get over things that we struggle with? How do we become more loving? How do we become more caring? we got to go to the source of love. Amen? It's something that we've got to pray about. It's something that we've got to seek. It's not something that we can just wake up in the morning and say, well, I'm going to start loving people more. It's something that we've got to go to the God then we got to go and, and get it to the source of God is love. So we have to go to the source and ask God to give us a heart of love. We have to continually ask Him in prayer to give us more love in our heart because I want to tell you right now, the, the more that we go to God, it's really denying ourselves. When we go to God, we deny ourselves. We're asking God to get rid of us, to crucify us, to pick up the armor and walk out this love that God has called us to do. You see, most of our love is fake love. Amen. Ain't get too many amens today, but most of our love, we want to love, but most of it's fake love. We'll be nice to people, but we're fake about it. <laughs> we're fake about our love. And I ain't talking about everybody in here because I know there's people in here that have love for other people. I know there's people in here that has a servant heart. I know there's people in here that really does care about others. But a lot of ways we care about others and it becomes fate because we're doing it because we have to. We're not doing it from agape top love that God has gave us. That no matter what anybody does, we're still going to love them. You see, we put standards on our love. There's conditions that cause us to love. If you're doing the right thing, then I'll love you. If you're saying the right thing, then I'll love you. If you're acting the right way, then I'll love you. So we put standards on our love. It's not the love that God's talking about here. It's a sacrificial love. It's a love that we love no matter what the situation or no matter what the circumstance is. And there's no way we can have this type of love if we don't get that love from God. And I'm not talking about if we don't get that love from God. God loves you. I'm talking about if we don't go to the source of love and ask God to strengthen us in every area, in every situation in our life. Most of our love, I wrote here, is a fake way of, uh, of acting like we care. We have to recognize our lack of love and ask God to help. By drawing nigh the others, we really draw nigh to Him. Think about that. By drawing nigh to others and doing for others, and having that sacrificial love is really the exact same thing as loving Jesus. I'll, I'll break it down to you. What did Jesus say? He said, I was hungry and you didn't feed me. I needed clothes and you didn't clothe me. And he goes on to say, what you do to the least of them is what you do unto me. If we really lived our life the way that the, the, an agape top loved the others, and we really looked at life as what would Jesus do kind of attitude, if we really looked at life as when we're entertaining angels unaware, amen, if we really looked at life as what I'm talking to somebody and the way I'm acting towards somebody is really the way that I'm acting towards God, I think it would change the way we would act towards other folks. I think it would change the mindset that we have or the opinion we throw at somebody because they don't look the way that we think they ought to look or they don't act the way that they think we think they ought to look and we can't understand how anybody could be that big of a heathen and we look past, we, we walk around with blinders on 
Satan has blinded the eyes of those that's lost. And I'm going to tell you, you can be a Christian and be lost in areas in your life. Amen? You can be lost in the, you can be lost in your attitude. You can be lost in your emotions. You can be lost in your feelings towards somebody. But I'm going to tell you right now that it, it is Satan that blinds us from loving one another. That if anything that he wants to do, he wants to distract our love and put our love on self or put our love on something else and not be loving one another. Because guess what? When we love one another, we become like Jesus. And he don't want us to be Christ-like. Because somebody may be out there and not look a certain way and we love them and they, they, they see the love of Christ and come to know him. God wants us, God, God wants us to draw nigh to one another. Therefore we're drawing nigh to him and therefore he can draw nigh to us. You see, it's the enemy's tactic to, to, to distract and, and divide and, and, and tear us apart. But Jesus come to, 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 for us to be on one mind, one accord, for us to draw to each other and to love each other. I wrote here, God wants us to, to change us by being, but from being self-serving to serving one another. No greater love than there is than a man to lay his life down for the brethren. You want to know what love is? It's when we lay our life down for one another. When we're there, when something, listen to me, when, I, when something means so much to us that we lay it aside for the good of somebody else. When our time and our, 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 our daily thing that we got going and it's all about us and we got to do this this day and man, it's all about us and we've got this, this, this day mapped out and all of a sudden something comes up and God says help somebody and we lay around our, our, we lay aside our agenda for somebody else with no greater love is there than a man to lay his life down for the brethren. God wants to change us by by being from from being self-serving to serving others. Number two, God wants to change us from from doing what's wrong and doing what's right. <laughs> because doing what's right, what brings blessings. I want you to turn your Bibles to James. Put it up there, James chapter one, verse twenty-two. In James, if you ever read James, and it's an awesome book of the Bible, in, in James chapter 1, it tells us how to draw close to God, how to be a servant of God. Because James starts off by saying, I, I say this because I am a servant of God. And he goes on and talks about faith and not having wavering faith and how we can draw to God by having faith in God. But he goes on to chapter at the end of the chapter there in verse 22, and he says, but be you doers of the word and not hearers of the word in, in your own be, but, but be you doers of the word and not hearers only. I want to tell you right now there's so many people in the church, the church is full of hearers of the word and not being doers of the word. If you're a doer of the word, you'll see over and over and the words written in red, Jesus is all about serving others, about loving others. If we're going to be doers of the word and not hearers only, Come on, the Bible says that we we don't love we don't want, we don't love and, and and just by saying so we don't love by by just be, being taught the word we love by deed and truth by by living it out by by actions and not just hearing it but by doing it by putting actions on our words. But look what he says: For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man beholding his natural face in the glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forget what manner uh, of man he is. But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty. I wrote here, God wants to change us by one, by being, not being self-serving. By two, by doing what is right and not, as, and, and not by, by doing what's wrong. Because doing what right brings blessing and by doing what wrong brings a curse. Amen. You see, the blessings of God come by by. By, by knowing who we are. He's saying right here that, that the number one thing that we, can, that, that, that we can walk this thing out and be like Jesus is we got to know who we are. I want to tell you right now, we so soon forget what our identity is in Christ. Our identity is to be loving like Jesus is, to be like Jesus is, to be the hands and feet of Jesus. And look what he's saying. It's like a man looking and coming and seeing that we are. Listen to me. Don't underestimate that you are the image of God 
in Jesus Christ, that you are co-heirs with him. To be a Christian is to be Christ-like. If any man among you seem to be religious and brideth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, that man's religion is in vain. Pure religion is undefiled before God. The Father is this, to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. The number, the number three thing that I wrote here, God wants to empower us for us to be a doer of the word and not just to be a hearer of the word. How does God empower us by us knowing our identity? Come on. You're not, listen to me, you're not a hater if you know Jesus. Amen. You're not a hater. Come on, anything that comes against uh, love is not of God. Amen. So that's not who your identity is. That's not what you was born to be. Let me tell you this right here. You was born to serve God. You was put in your mother's womb and formed to serve God. That is your identity. And I want to tell you right now, if we don't know who we are in Christ, then we will always fail. To be a doer of the word and not just a hearer of the word. Not to forget who we are in our identity. Number three is to be free. If any, he says it, but whosoever looketh into perfect law of liberty and continue therein, he being not a forgetful here but a doer, the work, this man shall be blessed in his deeds. I told you that doing the will of God and by loving others will be blessed. I don't know about you, but I want to be blessed. But I must know my identity, I must be free. And number, the last thing that we've got to know, we must be like Jesus. You know, it's so, <laughs> we so forget that we can be like Jesus. We, 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 put, we put barriers on ourselves. Well, I can't love like Jesus does. Well, I can't be like, why, why can't we? If we have all power, if Jesus says that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world, where do you think that power comes from? It comes from our identity in Christ. That we can be like Jesus. We can be like Jesus. We can love like Jesus did. Why can't we be like him? Because it says here in verse chapter 2, verse 1, My brethren, have not faith of the Lord Jesus Christ? He's asking you a question. Did I not put something in you that gives you the ability to have faith? Did I not give you the ability to love? Look what it goes on to say here. For Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with not respect of poor a person. For if there come you unto the assembly of man with a gold ring and, a, and godly a pearl, and there come also a poor man in vile raiment, and you have respect unto him that wear the gay clothing. In other words, Jesus is saying you put a standard on people, the ones that you'll love and the ones that you won't. In order to be empowered by God, we must be like Jesus. Luke chapter 10 verse 25 answers this whole question to the whole thing. He says, And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit life? Do you know it's not? And I've said this a hundred times, I know. Brother Shell not used to say this to me all the time. It's not pine the sky when we die. It's life and life abundantly here on this earth. The day that you accept Christ, eternal life begins. Amen. Amen. So how do we experience this eternal life? How do we have the joy of our salvation? How do we know our identity? It's by this. He said unto them, What is written in the law? How dost thou say it? And he answered and said, Thou shalt love. We done went over this. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, and thou hast done well. Thou shalt live. But he, willing to justify himself, said unto Jesus, Who is my neighbor? So I, I, I want to ask you this. I ask you today to love your neighbor. Who is your neighbor? And I want to tell you, it's anybody that's around you. Anybody that you come across. It's not a select few that you have chosen to love. It's anybody that's in your path. Do you know that Jesus said in John chapter 17, 
he said this. He said, I have manifested thy name to those that thou have gave me. What's such a strong calling that God has gave us people? That God entrusts in you a certain amount of folks that he's put in your path. And in your daily walk, every day, there's probably people that is surrounded by you, that becomes your neighbor, that comes people around you, that God has entrusted you with you. And the greatest love that you can show them is to share the gospel of Jesus Christ and his love. The greatest gift that you have is the gift that's been given to you, which is the mercy and grace of Christ that's been put inside you. The greatest tool that you have to share with them and to share this love is just to tell them who Jesus is. I ain't telling them you beat them on the head with the Bible. I'm talking about showing them the love of Christ, the mercy of God that God has showed you. And how much of us is really doing that? How much are we really how much are we really manifesting his name to those that God has given us given us? How much is how many of us is really doing that? Who is our neighbor? One, it's those around us. Two, it's the ones that God send us. The old saying, you may be the only Bible that some ever read. Don't miss an opportunity to share the love of Christ to others. And the greatest way to show that love is by showing who Jesus is. Look what Jesus says here. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. But he will and justify himself unto Jesus. Who is my neighbor? And Jesus answered him, said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him pass by on the other side, I believe there's people in this room that claim that they know Jesus, that say that they love God, but we're just passing by the needs that God has given us. You know there's needs in our community. There's no, you know there's needs at your workplace. And I'm not talking about opening your wallet and giving a lot of money. I just told you the greatest love that you could show somebody is to have what? Look what happens here. Look what happens. It, it, wasn't, what, it wasn't the money that he threw at him, a $20 tip. Look what happened that caused Jesus to say this is an example of who we're supposed to be. Look here. Verse 33. But a certain Samaritan a journey came where he was, and when he saw him, the main thing is he had compassion on him. If we can live our lives without compassion in our heart, I would have to question whether we really even know Jesus. Whether we even know God. If we don't have compassion for a lost person, that that person is going to die. And the Bible says every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that we just snurl our nose up and say, man, they're just going to live their life the way that they want to live it and we never show them the love of Jesus. I'm going to tell you, I don't see how you can know Jesus. If we can see somebody in need and suffering physically, mentally, spiritually, and not minister to them the love of the gospel of Christ. And I want to tell you the big one that we want to hold on to. If we see a need of somebody hungry and we don't feed them, if we see a need of somebody that needs clothes and we don't clothe them, and we don't clothe them, Jesus said <laughs> that we don't know him. He said, because what you do to the least of them is what you do to me. And he says, there'll be a separation of the sheep and the goats in the same text. Whether we have compassion is whether or not we can tell whether we have this life. How much compassion do you have? How much do you love your neighbors? How much do you care for those in need? How much do you try to meet the needs of others? Or how much of a blind eye have you turned to the lost and dying? How much of a blind eye have you turned to those that suffering Financially, physically, mentally. How much, how much have you snurled your nose up to a lifestyle of somebody that may be gay, that may be lost, that may hate you? How much have we really just had compassion? 
I want to tell you right now, if we really examine our life, we really don't have much compassion. Man, I remember when I first got saved, how much compassion I had. How much I really hurt for people that was in the same situation that I was in. I still have compassion. I still go to the ranch. It still burdens me, but I question whether I still have the same compassion that I had when I first got saved. The Bible says for us to go back to our first works. Go back to falling in love with Jesus. And I want to tell you right now, when you fall in love with Jesus, you'll fall in love for the hurting. You'll have compassion on those in need. When you really love Jesus with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, you will love your neighbor. It goes hand in hand. You can't love Jesus and not love people. If you're here today and you just don't like people, I watch Everybody Loves Raymond. I love that little show. And Frank, I always say, I just hate people. <laughs> and believe me, there's people that hate people. They don't want to deal with people. And I want to tell you right now, there's probably people in this room right now that really don't want to deal with people that have no compassion for the hurting, that has no compassion for the lost. And I want you to examine yourself and say, do I really know Jesus? Because if I have him in me, there's going to be something that cries out for me to help those in need. Go ahead and dim them lights. I guess you already got a song prepared. My voice is gone on. I don't know that I even got my message across today. I feel like I stumbled. But the message is plain and simple. And I'll tell you what the message is. We're too busy serving self to be serving anybody else. We're too worried about our own agenda, building our own kingdom, to worry about the kingdom of God. Shame on us. Shame on us if we have this gospel in us and we don't share it. Shame on us if we don't have compassion on those that's hurting. Shame on us if we're hiding under a bushel and we're not letting it shine. Shame on us if God has showed us mercy <clears throat> and we have no mercy for anybody else. Shame on us if we expect to be forgiven, but we don't want to forgive anybody else. Shame on us if we don't have love in our hearts for other folk. If everybody will stand, where are you at today when it comes to loving God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul? You say, man, I love the Lord. Do you really? How much do you love other folks? How much do you really love other people? The question is plain and it's simple. How much of a servant are you? Paul said, without love, everything else is, is nothing. He goes on and he makes a list of things that you can do in the spirit realm. You can be all religious. But if you don't have love, you don't have nothing. Nothing, zero. You can go this high, whole life and you can gain the whole world and lose your own soul because you don't have love. Without love, you have nothing, my friend. And I'm going to tell you this right here. When you have a self-serving attitude that everything's got to benefit you, you're going to live a miserable life because you'll let yourself down. And you'll never get enough. Things will never be right. The only way to have a, a life of abundance is you've got to love the Lord and you've got to love others. We're going to open up this altar. Maybe you're in here and you say, man, I've got it all worked out. I've, I've been loving folks. I know what it's like to love. I love others. I didn't read that message today and I'm sorry.
right now, you'll never, you'll never just develop love by waking up in the morning and saying, I'm going to start loving folks. You've got to go to the source. So if you lack love, if you lack wisdom, ask of God and He unbraids you.